In this video tutorial, we're going to look at the lifting mechanism shown below, where a gearbox is used to increase the torque of our output shaft, enabling us to lift heavier loads. Now we're going to carry out a number of calculations. First of all, we're going to calculate the velocity of the load as it's being lifted. Then we're going to calculate the torque of our motor that's required in order to lift that load. And finally, we're going to calculate the power of our motor. Now we've been given some information in the bottom left hand corner. We have the mass of our object. We have the input speed to our gearbox. We have the gear ratio and we have the diameter of the output shaft from the gearbox. So before we can calculate the velocity that the load's being lifted at, we need to calculate the angular speed of our output shaft from the gearbox. So we've specified that the input speed into the gearbox, which is the speed of the motor, is 420 RPM. And we're going to determine our output speed. Now the way that we're going to do that is using the gear ratio of our gearbox, which we've been told is six. So we have a formula in the top right hand corner that we've seen previously, gear ratio equals input speed over output speed. Okay, so as we want to calculate the output speed from the gearbox, we first need to rearrange that equation. And the way that we're going to rearrange it is first of all by multiplying each side by n out and then dividing each side by gear ratio. So what we'll get is n out equals n in divided by the gear ratio. Well, n in is given 420 RPM. The gear ratio is given as six. So the output speed from the gearbox is 70 RPM. Now the reason we know that it's RPM is because we use an input speed in RPM. However, in order to calculate the velocity that our load's moving at, we're going to use a formula that we've seen before, V equals R omega. Now in this example, the V is the velocity of the load, as we see from the diagram on the left hand side. R is the radius of our output shaft. The reason it's the radius of our output shaft is because the velocity that the load moves at needs to equal the linear velocity at the outside of our output shaft. It will be the tangential velocity because as the cables wound onto the shaft, that will equal the speed that the mass rises at. And the angular speed that we're going to use is also the angular speed of our output shaft. So just for clarity, we'll specify that it's R omega for the output shaft. So we've got some work to do first of all. We need to find the radius of the output shaft in SI units, which is meters. So down in our bottom left hand corner, we can add R out. R out is going to be half of D out, so 60 millimeters. And converting that to meters, we get 0.06 meters. We also need to convert omega because at the moment we have omega in revolutions per minute and we want that in radians per second. In the previous video, we looked at how to determine the conversion factor to get from RPM to rads per second. So in this video, we're just going to apply that conversion factor. So we have 70 times 2 pi over 60 which equals 7.33 radians per second. And that's our value of omega for the output shaft in radians per second. So now we can calculate the velocity of our load because the velocity of the load is R for the output shaft, which is 0.06 times omega for the output shaft, 7.33, giving us a velocity equal to 0.44 meters per second. We know it's meters per second because we worked in SI units throughout. Therefore, the units are in SI units. So now we're going to work backwards. We're going to work out the torque that's required on the output shaft to lift our load. And then we'll be able to work out the torque that's required from our motor. Note that the motor is running at a higher speed and generating a lower torque whereas the output shaft is running at a lower speed and generating a higher torque. Now, just to make things a little bit more realistic, we're also going to specify an efficiency for our gearbox. And we're going to say that the efficiency of the gearbox is 
Let's clear some space and then we can carry out our torque calculations. Okay, so torque is calculated by doing a force times a distance. And if we want to calculate the torque that's being applied to our output shaft, which we'll call T out, we need to know the force that's being applied on the outside of that shaft, as well as the distance from its line of action. Now let's just do a small sketch as an end view of our output shaft. So imagine that we're looking onto the output shaft here. What would we see? Well, we would see a circular shaft, and running over that shaft, we would see the cable. And attached to the end of that cable, we would have our mass M. So what we have here is we have a force acting downwards, and the distance from the line of action is going to be this distance here, which is the radius of the output shaft. So returning to our formula, T out is going to be the weight of the mass, because we're working with forces, times the radius of the output shaft. In the previous tutorial, we looked at how to convert a mass to a weight. So here we have T out equals mass times gravity. Weight is just mass times gravity. Again, times R out. We're going to work in SI units. So T out is our mass, 130, which is already in SI units, times gravity, which is 9.81, times the radius of the output shaft, which is 0 0.06. Therefore, the torque that's being applied to our output shaft is 76.52 newton meters. The SI units of torque is newton meters. So next, we're going to calculate the input torque to our gearbox. And the way that we're going to do this is, again, using our gear ratio. But first of all, we're going to make an assumption. We're going to assume that the gearbox is 100% efficient, and then we're going to apply our efficiency after. Because if the gearbox is 100% efficient, we have a formula that states gear ratio equals T out over T in. Note that when we work with torques, it's output over input, and when it was speeds, it was input over output. So the two are the inverse of each other. But the value that we've calculated for T out is the actual value of torque that we need in order to lift the object. If we assume that the gearbox is 100% efficient, then what we'll be calculating is the ideal input torque. So I'm going to mark subscript I for ideal. Ideal is assuming that there's no losses. Let's rearrange that to make T in ideal the subject. And we're going to do that by multiplying each side by T in ideal and then dividing by the gear ratio. So what we'll get is T in ideal equals T out divided by the gear ratio. And now we can input some values because T in ideal is going to be the 76.52 divided by the gear ratio of 6, giving us 12.75. Again, newton meters. But in reality, our motor is going to need to provide more than 12.75 newton meters in order to overcome any losses. So if we think about the efficiency of this gearbox, we know that we're going to need to provide more torque than 12.75 newton meters in order to overcome the losses. So we have a formula for efficiency that we can use, and that formula states that efficiency is T in ideal over T in actual. Therefore, T in actual, the thing we're trying to find, is T in ideal divided by the efficiency. Now we have values for those things. We have 12.75 as T in ideal, and an efficiency as a decimal of 0 0.72. Therefore, the torque that needs to be supplied to the gearbox is 17.71 newton meters. Okay, let's just review what we've done there. First of all, we calculated the output torque from the gearbox that was required in order to lift the mass. Next, 
We assumed that the gearbox was 100% efficient and we calculated the input torque and we found that to be 12.75 newton meters here. But we also know that the gearbox isn't 100% efficient, it's only 72% efficient. And here's where we need to be careful. What that means is that the motor needs to provide more torque than 12.75. It is possible to make some errors with this efficiency calculation, but what you need to make sure is that the actual torque supplied by the motor is higher than the ideal torque. So when we calculated the actual torque into the gearbox, which is the torque that's being supplied by the motor, we found that value to be 17.71 newton meters, and that's T in actual as supplied by the motor. We're going to do one final calculation, and in this final calculation, we're going to calculate the power requirement for our motor. So let's make a note of our T in actual up by our diagram. T in actual is 17.71 newton meters. And now let's clear some space. Okay, so the final formula that we need to apply states that power equals torque times angular velocity. P equals T omega. And what we're actually calculating here is the power supplied by the motor, which is the same as the power entering the gearbox. And it's P in actual that we want to calculate. The way that we're going to do that is by using T in actual and the angular speed of the input shaft. Well, we know T in actual is 17.71, and we know omega in is 420 RPM. But we need to convert 420 RPM to rads per second. We must work in SI units. So we can do that now. Omega equals 420. Our conversion is the same as we used previously. 2 pi over 60. Therefore, omega in rads per second equals 43.98 rads per second. So finally, P in actual equals T in actual, 17.71 times omega, 43.98, giving us a power equal to 778.9 watts. So in order to lift the 130 kilogram package at the specified speed, we need a motor that can provide a power of 778.9 watts.